Chapter 161 Tricky Choices You are listening at NovelFull.audio What did it mean to have an infinity mana stat? Could one cast hundreds of thousands of spells without ever feeling mana deficiency? Could spells that drain mana, like Mana Wall, Protective Shield be maintained forever without any side effects? Could one cast spells way beyond their tier limit because they had no mana cap restricting them? There were a million such questions that Max had in his mind as he inspected Miracle, however, nobody in the universe knew the answer to the questions brewing in his mind, as nobody in the universe had ever been born with an infinite mana staff. Thank you for all your help Rhea said in general to the group as a whole, as with her baby's life secured Rhea became much more amiable than before, warming up to Max and Sebastian. About the help, there are two things I want from you, Kremeth said, wasting absolutely no time in cashing that I and the favor he was owed for saving Rhea's child. Rhea winced, it was only now that she realized the gravity of the oath she had taken to Kremeth. If Kremeth wanted to, he could ask her to assassinate the Dragon King himself, or steal invaluable treasures from the Dragon Treasury and there would be absolutely nothing she could do to stop him bar taking her own life by violating the soul oath. In the heat of the moment, Rhea had promised Kremeth to grant him two favors. However, retrospecting on it now she was slightly regretful that she did. What do you want? Rhea asked, her voice sounding dull and skeptical as she looked into Kremeth's eyes. Since I'm a great guy, I will give you a choice. 1. Your baby becomes the mount for my disciple. Impossible. Rhea instantly cut off Kremeth when he proposed making her child the mount of a mortal vampire. The outcome of her baby becoming a slave was worse than her baby dying, Rhea was never going to accept the condition. Woman, don't test my patience, I'm not afraid of you or your dragon king, I've been around for longer than your great-grandfather and I will be around for much longer still. In your weakened state you are no match for me and the soul oath is not a light joke. If you die, your baby will end up as my disciple's mount if you live and accept my condition it will still end up the same way. So don't interrupt my kindness again, else there will be no mercy. Kremeth said as Rhea felt shivers down her spine for the first time in a long time. Kremeth had a tight grip on her weak spot and everything he said made perfect sense. Her baby was not strong enough to reject a soul contract with her current strength, and without her to protect it, she would end up as Max's slave one way or the other. This meant even if Rhea broke her oath and died, it would be over absolutely nothing. So, either your baby becomes a mount for my disciple, or, we make them sign a bond of equals in a way that both can summon each other to help in battle through a soul bond where the help can be accepted or rejected by the one getting called. But this mercy will have an additional cost attached to it, which will be you curing my disciple's mana veins while also dragon dot forming him and teaching him the ways of the dragon. Kremeth said as Rhea felt her heart beat out of her chest. The old turtle was a sly bastard, using the future of her child as a bargain chip, he made sure to leave the second option as the only option for Rhea to choose and then proceeded to slyly ask for three wishes instead of one inside his second option. Rhea simply did not wish for her child to be associated with a weak mortal like Max, however, she had absolutely no choice in this matter. Scanning Max up and down she relented as although she could see that the kid had a good character, she was not comfortable with him signing a soul bond with her child. There has to be a better way, if you want riches. If you want treasures or an army, I'll give you anything. I'll kill anyone for you, help you obtain any woman you want and even help you conquer entire galaxies if you wish for it. Just not this. Rhea said, borderline pleading with Kremeth to give her a way out, but the old turtle was relentless. Choose, or die. He said as Rhea felt the soul contract tighten around her soul, as she knew that there would be no respawning from her death if she did not make a choice now. Max was flabbergasted by this development, he did not understand what the hell was going on, as he thought about reasoning with Kremeth and to ask him to stop this madness, however, before he could utter a word Drax stopped him. Kid, this single opportunity is the greatest gift you will ever get in life, trust me, if you stop this deal from going through today, you will regret it for the rest of your life. 
You don't realize how lucky you are that the old man Kremeth takes a personal interest in you when he doesn't really need to. If I were you, I'd give both my kidneys to be his student, yet you don't even appreciate the opportunities he brings you on a silver platter. Shut up today and let the deal go through, we will deal with your morals sometime later. Drax's words made Max choke back on what he was going to say as he stood there just embarrassed and silent. Rhea looked back and forth between Max and her baby before finally relenting and accepting Kremitha's second favor. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Here is Tuesday's riddle, sorry it's a day late. First one to get a correct answer in the comments below will get a price. Q. What is the sum total of all of Max's stat points? Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 162 Soul Bond You are listening at NovelFull.audio Rhea tenderly picked up her baby as she started to speak to her in Draconic, trying to explain to her why she needed to willingly sign a soul bond with a vampire. The little baby could see the pain in her mother's eyes when she explained the unfavorable reality they were in, however, unlike her mother who did not like the mortal vampire, Miracle herself was pretty fond of Max. Not only had Max worked hard to save her life, but he also had a deep charm in his eyes that made Miracle feel comfortable around him. Trying to reassure her mother about the situation she slowly spoke back in Draconic, in a slow and broken manner, much to the surprise of Sebastian. Did the baby just speak back? How did it learn language so fast? Sebastian inquired as Kremeth patiently replied saying, Dragons are born with the knowledge of how to speak the Draconic language. Their intelligence stat is very high, and they are very sharp even as small kids. Sebastian pursed his lips in amazement as he wondered if his own egg child will be as smart as Miracle. It's okay mother, I understand Miracle told Rhea in her broken Draconic, as she bit her own palm with her small baby teeth causing a very little amount of blood to trickle from the wound as she prepared for the soul bond. Noticing her actions, Kremeth immediately instructed Max to follow suit. Slice your palm to draw blood and shake hands, Kremeth said as he then began reciting ancient hymns required to oversee a soul bond. Max felt uneasy doing this, however, under the guidance of Drax and Kremeth he sliced his palm with a sword, drawing lots of blood and shook hands with the baby dragon. The moment their hands touched, Kremeth placed his flappy turtle hands over their palms as he began to recite words in a language that Max did not understand. Merai zom doka lama verais mario loka ich lavario makazava, Max's consciousness faded, as his vision turned black in an instant after he heard this phrase being recited by Kremeth as he felt a small dragon flying into his soul while a doppelganger that looked just like him left his soul to enter the dragons. The old turtle had placed an ancient soul bond with the Norns of Fate as the enforcer of the soul contract upon Max and Miracle. Kremeth decided to not go for the Universal Queen but instead the gods of fate themselves to oversee the soul oath. The moment the oath was placed the soul energies of Max and Miracle were instantly drained as the two lost consciousness while their souls were bound by a soul link. A new skill appeared in both their stat panels which was named Dot, Summon Soulmate, a skill that allowed both of them to summon the other in times of need should the other party accept the invitation for help. What neither Max or Miracle knew however, was the fact that from this day forward the two would share all their EXP gains equally with one another. This meant that 50% of whatever Max's EXP gain would be, would be shared with Miracle and the same would hold true for Miracle as well. It was for this special reason that Kremeth decided to go for the old soul bond that was used before the era of the Universal Queen as the new ones did not have an EXP sharing pact. Kremeth understood fully well that with Miracle's background and connections her future growth was sure to be astronomical. However, now with 50% of her EXP gains falling into his disciples' lap for free, so would his. You are cruel, Rhea said to Kremeth as she saw her baby lose consciousness once more in a single day as her heart bled over the soul bond that took place just now. Kremeth had said that a bond of equals would be signed between Max and Miracle but he never specified which version would be used, which was why Rhea was tricked into believing that it would just be the plain old summoning pact. In Rhea's eyes her baby was a supreme existence bound to become the ruler of the universe one day, 
however, Max was a leecher who was bound to drag her down. Irrespective of her personal feelings, there was nothing she could do about the bond now that it was placed. With how Kremeth had manipulated the situation, the best she could do now was to train Max well and cure his defect for him so that he would not become a deadweight for Miracle to carry in the future the circumstances that Kremeth created left Rhea with no room to ignore Max's needs, but instead have nothing but the best intentions for him as now one way or the other his rise would directly affect the rise of her baby. If Max somehow died now, it would damage her baby's soul as well and affect her future growth which meant that Rhea could not risk having Max assassinated as well leaving her with no alternative choices at all. Although Rhea hated the circumstances she was forced into, she silently respected Kremitha's scheming. She had to admit that the old turtle was really something else. Meanwhile Rudra, Rudra hummed in the shower of the galactic battleship as he enjoyed a fresh bath after being bathed in blood from head to toe in his previous fight. Although after reaching God.hood he did not need to clean himself with soap and water as he could just will his aura to dispel all the dust and blood from his skin, Rudra enjoyed the fresh feeling he got after a bath so he preferred to do so. Today he had massacred a legion consisting of 53 frigates, 12 destroyers, and a few hundred supply ships as he massacred four tier 6 gods in the process. Today's attack was him blatantly spitting in Thor's face and undermining his authority as the Thunder Monarch as a loss of such a large force could not be taken lying down for any nation and could be interpreted as an act of war. Rudra expected retaliation this time, he expected his name to resound through the halls of the Thunder Nation Council, as he desperately hoped for Thor to send a larger more serious force after his head. If his estimations were correct, the bells of war would start ringing any day now. Meanwhile Asaiva, Anna and Asaiva had become the two most hated people on the university campus after their decision to kill fellow university mates inside the dungeon. The two of them could not leave the security of the dorm area without some group or other coming after their lives, while some even broke university rules and attacked them inside the dorm area. Naturally, Asaiva and Anna were no pushovers and held their ground valiantly until the teachers arrived and punished the instigators of the fight. The two of them were in a rough spot overall, as the company of the boys was much missed at this moment. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by patron Cervantes91 please thank him in the comments for this one. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 163 Max wakes up you are listening at novel full dot audio. Dead you say? Yes sir, all of them, dead, hmm, Thor brought a finger to his beard dot covered chin as he fell into deep thought. The legion he had sent to escort a merchant shipment of essential ship parts and ammunition had been obliterated by a rogue god and it was a heavy blow to both his army and the merchants flying under his banner who were rattled inside out by this incident. So who was behind it? Thor asked with an edge behind his voice, his tone making it clear that he did not want, we are not sure, as the answer. Whoever it was must be at least a peak tier 7 god O dot or possibly a monarch. The courtier replied with fear, making his tongue stutter. There are no rogue peak tier 7 gods roaming in this part of the universe. You get it. And there is absolutely no chance that a monarch can personally take action in this matter. Either this is the dark faction declaring war on us or a tier 7 general under a monarchy trying to provoke us into war. Either way there is an organization behind this and irrespective of who it is, if it's war that they seek then it is war that they will find. Thor said authoritatively as his aura subtly rolled across the entire room, creating a suffocating pressure on all the courtiers inside. We will have an answer for you by tomorrow my lord, the courtier eventually said as Thor retracted his aura pressure. What is the situation on the merchant front? Thor asked irritably, my lord, the merchants are scared to fly under your banners, the threat of a rogu, the threat of an organization going after their goods doesn't spark confidence in them, some of them wish to suspend operations in the kingdom for a while, the business minister in Thor's court replied as Thor rubbed his eyebrows in frustration hearing this. Over the last two weeks countless small and big merchant ships have been attacked by an unknown group causing a loss of several billion gold coins to the merchants. 
To make matters worse, their most heavily guarded shipment worth nearly 400 billion gold coins and protected by an entire legion was destroyed yesterday, which destroyed their faith in the Thunder Kingdom of being capable of protecting their goods. Previously Thor's assurance of providing appropriate security calmed the merchants and emboldened them to continue trade, however, the current situation proved his previous promise to be ineffective. A nation needed capable merchants to keep the wheel of economy turning, and should the merchants get cold feet and leave his country it would become a crippling blow to the Thunder Nation's economic prowess. Issue up to 60% insurance for the merchants' goods, backed by the Royal Treasury and allocate more troops to the safety of shipments above 50 million gold coins. And someone find me the name of who the fuck is behind all this mess. Thor shouted in wrath as he smashed the handle of his own throne in anger. Thor was trying his best to remain civil, but the sneaky terrorist attacks were testing his patience. Meanwhile Max, Max woke up with his head feeling a bit heavy. As he scanned the room he saw Miracle sleeping soundly beside her mother Rhea, her appearance changing from that of a black and gold dragon to one of a red dragon baby. Sebastian was sweeping the floor with what Max assumed was a broom made with leaves, while Kremeth was making dinner in his ancient pot. You were out for a full four days, boy. The dungeon has already closed, this is a battle, zone now, Kremeth said without glancing at Max, as Max checked his system notification log. 22 hours ago, system notification. The special dungeon, Dragon's Paradise, will be closed in 2.00.00 hours, please leave the dungeon if you are not preparing to stay. 20 hours ago, system notification. The special dungeon, Dragon's Paradise, has now closed. All entries and exits have been sealed, the dungeon exit will next open in 900 days. 20 hours ago, system notification. The designation of the dungeon, Dragon's Paradise, has now shifted from being a wild zone to a battle zone. Shit, 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 Max felt his heartbeat increase as he saw those notifications. While he was planning on staying inside the event dungeon for the next 2.5 years anyways, he wanted to find some member of the Red Hand group to carry a message for Asaiva and his family outside before it happened though. Max knew his brother's nature, if he thought even for a second that Max was stuck inside this dungeon against his will, he would most likely year the dungeon down and the Thunder Nation with it if they dared oppose his will. However, while his family would only be worried sick for him, he was not sure he could say the same for Asaiva. Max had a special bond with Asaiva. He had shared every decision of his life after his reincarnation with her, whether small or big he told her and consulted her over everything and he knew exactly how much she appreciated this transparency and communication. His decision to stay inside the dungeon was possibly the biggest decision of his life yet, and somehow due to circumstances he was not able to tell it to Asaiva. Max wanted to let her know that he would be back, that they would be together again. Although he did not realize it himself, what he was really worried about was that after the 2.5 years of separation he might not be her favorite individual anymore. It was a depressing feeling for Max, but there was nothing he could do about it anymore. In a glimmer of hope he turned to Sebastian as he asked, Hey buddy, did you by chance send a message outside through anyone that me and you are okay inside so that SIV and Anna won't worry? Please tell me you did. Max you are awake. Wohu. I was so worried. What did you say? Sending a message. Um, not really no. Sebastian said as he took a pause from sweeping to greet Max who had just woken up. However, immediately as he heard that no from Sebastian, Max put his head back down to sleep as he felt a stinging pain in his heart. All his hopes were now dead. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. First of all, let's go guys. The dream has been realized we have clutched 10th place on the GT rankings. Good job everyone. It's absolutely insane that we did. With only 8 days till the month ends, now all that we need to do is to make sure that we hold our ground till 31st. Secondly, since it is Thursday today, hence here is the riddle for the day. Q, what is the system name of Max's first sword? 
The first answer in the comments below gets a price, forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 164 Heartbreak You are listening at NovelFull.audio Are you sure this information is correct? Johnny asked the S-Class mercenary who brought the information to him. We are positive that this information is 100% true sir, it was Shikuni of the elites who attacked Thunder Nation ships. We have analyzed the wreckage and based on the attack marks and the information in the database, the thickness of the sword used in the attack matches perfectly with his Grim Reaper blade while all the attacks used are known to be in his arsenal although he is a tier 6 god, his strength is formidable and with his record in Omega being that he was able to kill Lucifer while being a mortal, maybe he can indeed kill four gods at once. The mercenary replied with composure even though his back was drenched in sweat standing in front of Johnny. So the Thunder Nation is after my boy Shikuni, Che. Burn this information, tell the Thunder Nation to fuck off, the red hands will not harm a hair off my boy's head. Johnny said as the S-Class mercenary instantly felt uncomfortable with the verdict that had been passed. Sir, the Thunder Nation has paid us a lot of money to do this investigation and they will pay us a shit and more when we send them the report. If we play our cards right, it will be the biggest payout in the history of this organization. The mercenary tried to talk some sense to Johnny who only shook his head in dismay. Who do you think will win in a fight between Thor and Shikuni, Elad? Johnny asked curiously, well of course it would be Thor sir, he is a monarch, a tier 8 powerhouse, a supreme god amongst even gods, while Shikuni is just a tier 6 run-of-the-mill god. The mercenary replied innocently. Ha 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 Johnny began laughing merrily to the joke he had just heard, slowly at first but hysterically as time went on. Eventually a full two minutes passed but Johnny's laughter had not died down even a little, which compelled the mercenary to interrupt as he asked, I'm sorry sir, what exactly is so funny? Johnny looked at his blank, clueless face as he laughed hard once more for a full minute before he controlled his laughter and managed a reply. What's funny is you thinking that Thor can beat my boy Shikuni. You don't get it lad, since Shikuni boy has decided to go after the Thunder Nation, the Thunder Nation is already as good as history with its leader Thor as good as dead. He is called, Shikuni the Undefeated, for a reason, while you may not know him personally, I do. Forget about selling information to the Thunder Nation and focus on winding up our operations from that nation and sell all our properties and assets there while the prices are still high. Ha 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 ha, Thor stronger than my boy my ass, the mercenary was taken aback by Johnny's confidence, he had never seen Johnny behave the way he was behaving today, and there was not a speck of doubt in Johnny's mind when he spoke the words that he spoke. The mercenary could feel that Johnny meant every word that he had uttered today, but for him to accept Johnny's words as the inevitable truth sent shivers down his spine. Thor was a mighty figure in his head, an untouchable figure, and the Thunder Nation was vast and strong. However, for an organization to be capable of wiping it out and killing Thor, they would need to be at least another monarchy and their leader a monarch. For the tier 5 mercenary to believe that a man who had not even played Sigma for one full year yet, to be at the strength of a monarch was to break his worldview completely. Just how strong was Shikuni to be compared to a monarch? Meanwhile Asaiva, Raven and Sebastian have not returned from the dungeon, Severus broke the news to Anna and Asaiva as for the past several hours he had been in contact with Thunder Nation officials as well as the university management and the final conclusion that everyone had after a lot of inspection was that Max and Sebastian had not exited the dungeon for reasons unknown. Asaiva felt her heart sink when she heard the news. It was common knowledge that nobody survived the dungeon for the 2.5 years for which the entry and exit portals remained closed which meant that Max was most likely going to die in there now that he was trapped inside. No, 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 this can't be happening, Anna shrieked at hearing the news, her immediate thought being that Max was most likely caught by the demon Asmodeus alongside Sebastian and the two were being detained and tortured. Or even worse, dead, by now. Asaiva was even worse, her usually shiny and beautiful eyes looked like they had lost all of their luster as she stared blankly into Severus's face. I will do some more investigation from my end about his whereabouts, 
but the best case scenario for now is that Raven and Sebastian will be back outside with us in 2.5 years. Worst case. Be prepared for the worst. Severa said, his front of appearing strong and unaffected failing miserably as the man had real tears in his eyes as he spoke this. M.M.Y.'s sister has a treasure that will help us look at them, yes. My sister. Let's go to my sister, Anna said as she grabbed Asiva and Severus's hands and sprinted for the teleportation center. The destination. Vanaheim, dot xxxx. End of volume 3. Forged through fire reader note. Time skip incoming. Volume 1, 2, 3 were the introductory volumes to build the world background, powers, and characters while insane fast-paced action will follow in probably one of the most important volume of the book, Volume 4. The Fires of War. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. This bonus chapter is sponsored by Patron Savanthi. Thank her in the comments for this one. Dot also to thank you all for helping me reach top 10 in GT ranks, I will kick things off in a grand fashion for volume 4 tomorrow. 5 chapters will be released tomorrow, but steal your hearts before you read them. For the shit is about to get real forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 165 The Sky Has Fallen You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. 2.5 years later, Sebastian was extremely excited for this very day for the last 2.5 years. Over countless training exercises and torturous training drills that he had been through with Max, it was the unshakable promise of him and Max going to Earth together and eating the dish, Momos, when this hell-like dungeon over that kept him going. I can't believe we are finally going to visit Earth. Sebastian said as he rubbed his hands together in excitement. Sebastian had heard a lot about planet Earth from Max. A beautiful planet of humans with many beautiful natural and man-made places worth visiting. Sebastian was especially excited to visit the streets of Paris and see the architectural beauty of its buildings and to watch the sunrise at the Grand Canyon while having an ice cream cone. Max, what's taking you so long, don't you want to see your niece and nephew? They must be cute, fat, plump kids by now, ha ha ha. Sebastian said to Max as he wanted the man to hurry and stop giving Miracle such an emotional goodbye hug. One change that had happened over the last two years was that Sebastian now knew exactly who Max really was. He and Max had grown a lot closer as friends and had shared their emotional baggage with each other where Max came clean about his real identity and his family background. Geez shoddy, Wait a damn minute, Max replied as he pinched Sebastian's nose with his new scaly hands before shaking it a little so that it would make Sebastian sneeze. A chew a chew a chew Sebastian sneezed thrice violently, causing his spittle to be released all around as Max said, May Kremeth bless you. Sebastian hated it when Max did this to him, apparently his race was prone to sneezing easily and Max took advantage of that fact to make him sneeze every time he said something that the other did not like. Fuck you Max, I'm not giving you a single piece of my momos, Sebastian said defensively as Max patted him on the head. System, we would like to exit please. Max said as a system prompt gave him the option to be teleported to anywhere in the universe upon exit. Max not having to think even slightly as to where he had to go, immediately chose planet hashtag H2047 aka Earth as his destination. It had been a long time since he had been home, and he was very homesick. Immediately, him and Sebastian were teleported from the Dragon's Paradise dungeon and bound for planet Earth. Dot, on Earth, Max expected to walk out of a bustling teleportation center at Earth, he had even prepared to flex on Sebastian by using his brother's name to get a VIP treatment upon entering Earth, but shockingly him and Sebastian were teleported in an abandoned teleportation center building where dust and spider webs were his only companion. Whoa, where the fuck did the system teleport us to, Sebastian asked Max as he had never seen such an abandoned teleportation building before today. Max himself was a little shocked, as he could feel the very familiar gravity of 1G on Earth, a slightly cold 13 degrees Celsius weather on his skin and the familiar scent of slightly polluted air in his lungs. This is Earth, 
for sure it is, Max thought as he could see, Cubercorp written on the abandoned teleportation center walls, confirming his suspicion that this was the planet he was familiar with. Max ran out of the teleportation center, his heartbeat increasing rapidly as there was one thing that was bugging his mind. Why is it so damn quiet? Where is all the chatter and hustle bustle? Max wondered, as his worst fears were realized when he exited the teleportation and took a look at the wasted city in front of his eyes. Broken concrete buildings sprawled all across the landscape, abandoned dirt covered cars laid and used on the roads, wild deers roamed the man made roads, while alien galactic patrol officers sat around a small fire and laughed as they cooked some sort of meat. Is this country J? Max wondered as in the far distant corner of his eyes he could see the familiar Tokyo Tower. Or what few floors remained of the Tokyo Tower as a deep encroaching feeling gnawed at his heart. Nothing will ever happen to Earth till I'm around Max, Rudra's voice seemed to whisper in Max's mind as Max felt a sudden shortness of breath. What happened buddy, are you okay? Sebastian asked with worry visible in his eyes as Max pointed towards the west and said, the upside, home, two kilometers, Sebastian nodded, he understood Max's intentions from the broken words that he spoke as the two sprinted towards the upside, the home where Max was raised, the house where his niece and nephew were born in. There were no humans on earth whatsoever, it was like a nuclear winter had wiped the planet clean of all life as the massive city of Tokyo which once resided over 50 million inhabitants, now laid empty without one human on its streets. When Max finally reached the upside's gates, he saw that the once tall and proud wall that was mounted with countless protective weapons that separate the society's elite from the common masses was now reduced to a pile of rubble as the distinction between the rich and the poor was torn down. Max's heartbeat became faster as he ran past the Upside Hospital which now looked like a ghost film set, and then past Sophie's house, the same place he had committed his first murder in all those years ago. Finally Max reached his house, panting heavily as he saw some werewolf calmly chilling on his house lawn munching on what Max assumed was a dog carcass. Get OFF my property you bastard, Max launched into a fit of rage as he jumped the werewolf out of nowhere and began punching the shit out of the tier 2 beast who was caught completely off dot guard by Max's attack. Where are the humans? Where are they? How dare you eat on the lawn of Shikuni the undefeated, you ugly bastard, Max let all his frustrations out with every punch that he landed on the werewolf's face as he beat the beast to an inch to his death. He dot he's dead. Shikuni is dead, not his lawn anymore. The werewolf said as Max felt the energy drain out of his hands as he felt a stinging pain in his heart. You lie, Sebastian growled at the werewolf as he jumped on top of its face. Who killed Shikuni? Don't speak nonsense or you die right here, right now, Sebastian threatened the werewolf who grinned at the duo showing his ugly bloody teeth and said, my lord Lucifer killed the bastard, ha ha ha. Chapter 166 A Protected Room You Are Listening at Novel Full Audio. Dragon's Breath, Max used Dragon's Breath as he incinerated the punk werewolf on his lawn to ashes. Geez, warn me first at least you vampiric dragon, Sebastian said as he patted his ass which was on fire. Max breathed heavily, in his anger he did not realize that Sebastian was still sitting on the werewolf when he decided to incinerate him. System Notification you have killed a tier 2 werewolf from the dark faction on the neutral planet hashtag H2047. You have been rewarded with plus 3500 EXP. System remark. Using dragon dot breath on a near dead enemy. What an overkill. Max's mind was in a disarray, he could just not believe that his brother might be dead. He knew his brother had to be out there somewhere because there was absolutely no way that he could die, for he was the strongest warrior. No. 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 Max was about to have a panic attack when he felt Sebastian's hand pulling the bottom of his robe as Max turned to look towards his friend. Sebastian said, remember what Master has taught us. The Turtle Hermit Way Rule Number 12 Never trust the words coming out of a dying man's mouth. The bastards. The bastards speak more gibberish than fourteen kids combined. 
Max completed Sebastian's words as he remembered Kremeth's teachings. Kremeth had made the two write his rules and teachings over and over again on a piece of stone so that they would never forget the teachings of the turtle. On their very first day out, the two already encountered a situation where they had to use his cowardly teachings to steal their minds. Thank you for saving my state of mind my fellow coward, I was about to become brave for a moment there. Max said as Sebastian nodded and replied, it was a close one, having calmed down, Max visited his old house feeling a slight chest pain to look at his usually well-maintained house full of dust and dirt. For the sake of courtesy he gave Sebastian a tour of his house, however, one could make out from the tone of his voice that there was a lot of pain behind his words as he spoke them. As the two went upstairs to where Max's room used to be, they were shocked to see that Max's room was sealed by a mana barrier as if protecting something important inside, unlike the rest of the house. Mana Barrier Sebastian asked Max with a raised eyebrow as Max felt a glimmer of hope seeing the purple barrier as he felt that his brother might have left a clue for him within that would explain all this mess. The only problem was that Max had absolutely no clue on how to break past the mana barrier. Sebastian swung his battle axe at the barrier as hard as he could, however, it bounced off harmlessly against the purple barrier as Sebastian was knocked back three steps from the recoil of the attack. A laser sensor suddenly emerged in the hall outside Max's room as it began scanning the intruders. Identity confirmed, Max Rajput. Welcome home. A mechanical voice that sounded like a mesh of male and female voices meshed together into one set as Max grinned a stupid grin before opening the now unlocked door to his room. Unlike the rest of the house which was dirty, Max's room was squeaky clean with his bedsheet still smelling fresh and fragrant as if they were fresh out of a wash. Preservation magic, Sebastian said as he could feel the power of the runes and mana circuits in the room as he was impressed by the intricacy of the craft behind the structure. On Max's desk he found a neatly folded note, with an abbreviation, to Max on top. Max recognized the handwriting as that of his sister-in-law Naomi as he opened the letter feeling all warm and giddy inside. The letter read. Hey Max, if you are reading this letter it means you have returned to Earth after we have all relocated to Radiance and must be confused as to what the hell is going on. Don't worry, your sister-in-law will explain it all, so just take a seat and stop panicking. Max read the first few lines and let out a sigh of relief, his hands which were previously trembling seemed to have regained their usual calm as he took a seat on his bed and continued reading with a wide grin on his face. Your brother has declared war on the Thunder Nation and fears that while he is out there in the universe fighting, the security on Earth is not adequate enough to withstand the Thunder Nation's wrath. Hence, for the security of us humans he relocated the entire planet to the capital planet of the One Night Clan, Radiance, where we will have a continent of our own to live and the protection of a tier 8 monarch Augustus one night while your brother is out fighting. If you are reading this and wish to find us, come to Radiance and look for our house. Apparently it's a mansion as big as the entire upside, lol, they gave Ethan and Christian Grey a much smaller house, Max's smile only got wider as he read this as he looked at Sebastian and said, My planet's inhabitants have been shifted to a planet called, Radiance, my brother evacuated the entire planet for security reasons. Sebastian smiled back, he was glad that Max's entire planet was not massacred by some psycho god or something, as for the Momos, he could always eat them on planet Radiance as well. Max looked back down to read the last few lines. Jake and Amy have become much larger, they outgrow their clothes every three weeks now. They miss their uncle and so do I, so even if you are on some secret mission and read this letter, do come back home to show your face. Also, your brother insisted that I remind you to not forget your diary before you leave the room or something. He said you would know what it means. L.O. Max's eyes widened in shock as he read the last sentence as he ran towards his desk and opened his drawer to find the diary that he wrote after reincarnating to be right there. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Chapter. For the day. Enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 167 He knows you are listening at novelfull.audio.
Max opened his diary to skim through all the notes he had made on the day he had reincarnated, feeling nostalgic about how he had utilized his time and what opportunities he missed out on in the outside world because he was inside the dungeon. Max winced when he saw that he had missed the annual Seven Galaxies auction where a fragmented legendary grade item was sold for 50,000 gold in a mystery box lot. He could have made a fortune on that item since he knew exactly the box number it was in. Max also noticed that he had missed out on betting on the Rumovac vs Mujanak fight, where the defending champion Mujanak was defeated by newbie Rumovac in the fifth round. Had he bet on that specific outcome he could have 100x his money from a single bet. It was regrettable that he lost the chance. As Max skimmed through his notes, he realized that seven-tenths things that he had jotted down were opportunities to make crazy money as Max began to realize just how greedy by nature he was. Instead of focusing on more important stuff such as power balances, hidden talented warriors, important political and historical moments, his main focus post his reincarnation had been money and fame and it reflected on the notes that he had made. Max felt slightly stupid reading these notes, he had got a second chance yet his initial mindset was very petty. Thankfully he had grown a lot in the past three and a half years since his reincarnation and was no longer the same naive kid. Max quickly skimmed through the events that were yet to happen, as he began doubting the authenticity of his own knowledge anymore. Several Earth-related events that he had jotted down were no longer possible as history had taken a big turn with his brother evacuating the planet, as this definitely did not happen in his past life, nor did Earth ever go to war against the Thunder Nation. Regardless, Sebastian skimmed through the entire book as he calmly recalled all the future knowledge that he might need in the coming times. On the very last page of his book, however, Max found a note written unmistakably in his brother's handwriting that said, Interesting, so you are a reincarnator. Firstly. Why do you need a diary? Are you dumb? Will you forget such important stuff otherwise? This is your biggest secret and you just leave it unprotected in your room. Secondly. Meet me in my office when you see this note, we have to talk. Burn this book already if you haven't yet, G's son, Max instantly activated the Agni Astra as the book in his hands burst into flame startling Sebastian. All okay. Sebastian asked worried that Max had burnt the book in anger and that something nasty was written inside, however, Max calmly replied, embarrassing personal stuff, can't leave it around. Sebastian laughed thinking nothing suspicious of it, however Max's emotions were much more complicated. His reincarnation was his biggest secret and now his brother knew about it. Grandpa Drax, he knows. Max said to Drax in his mind as the AI remained oddly silent to this message as if he had no input regarding it. Drax could see Max's heart rate going through the roof as he tried to process the information he just received. His reincarnation was the only thing he had ever hidden from his brother and it was not because he did not trust him, but it was because Max felt that the wisest choice was to not tell anyone about it. Max felt it was for the best that his brother knew about it, because now Max would be able to directly tell him about what investment choices to make and what decisions to take without sounding like a wacko, but if his brother asked about the details of his reincarnation and Hazriel. Max was not sure if he was willing to answer those doubts because if there was one secret that even Kremeth could not wrap his head around in the universe, it was reincarnation. If you're done here let's head out for Radiance. Sebastian said casually as he interrupted Max's brooding. Smiling Max nodded as he quickly stored some of his personal items that he wished to carry from Earth to Radiance. Dot, thank you for all the memories, Max thought as he slammed his house door shut and headed out with Sebastian as he felt slightly bittersweet knowing he would probably never come back here again. It was a complicated way back for Max from Earth to Radiance as he and Sebastian had to mend the teleportation formation and power it up once again so that it could have enough charge to carry two people from Earth to Radiance before making the trip. Although the structure itself was mostly intact with only minor repairs needed, the power core had depleted completely after a long period of inactivity. Luckily Max and Sebastian did have some mana stones in their inventory that they used as viable replacements otherwise they would have been stranded on Earth with no immediate means to escape. System Notification You have entered Light Faction territory. 
On their teleportation trip that took nearly two minutes, the duo got the system notification when they ventured from the now neutral zone Earth to the light faction territory thereafter. It was funny to Max how Earth was a neutral zone now that humans had left the planet, as he realized that all beastly races that were closer to nature preferred being part of the neutral faction and not siding with either light or dark. It was only the sentient bipedal species who were righteous or evil, and it was the bipedal species who were the root cause of 89% of the universe's problems. Mechanical Notification You have arrived at the One Night Territory Capital Planet, Radiance. Please read the local administration rules before leaving the teleportation center to make sure you are not arrested for violating the laws. The exit will be on your left. A mechanical notification informed Max and Sebastian that they had arrived at Radiance as the two walked off from the teleportation platform and were quickly scanned and then let through after it was ensured that they were not members of the Dark Faction. On his way out, Max saw a huge black board with golden letters inside which explained the rules of Planet Radiance as Max chuckled and walked past it, understanding the genius behind this move. Even in his past life there would often be aliens who would commit crimes and appeal as not guilty in courts with their argument being that they were not familiar with the laws of the planet. However with this system in place by the one nights it left no room for alien crime going unpunished for not knowing the rules as they were literally plastered in gold upon entering the planet. Where is the humans from Earth settlement? Max asked the information center attendant outside the teleportation center who explained to Max the correct way to get to the human continent and exactly which city in the continent Rudra's mansion was located in. Max thanked the attendant and tipped him 100 gold coins as him and Sebastian began their journey to head towards Max's home. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Chapter 3 of 5, Enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 168 Mystery Child You are listening at NovelFull.audio Planet Radiance was very different from Planet Earth. The flora and fauna seemed alien and although plants and trees were still green on this planet they did not grow in a conical shape as most trees did back on Earth but rather in a much different spherical shape. To say that Planet Radiance was massive would be an understatement, Planet Radiance was not just massive it was humongous. According to the limited intel that Max collected post-visiting the planet, the continent allotted to Earthlings was about twice the land area of all of the Earth combined. The nights were also much different with there being cosmic lights lighting up the night sky throughout the year in a beautiful shade of blue, green and purple night sky. Apparently bioluminescence was common in native animal species of the planet with various birds and animals having at least one small spot on their bodies where they had lighting. According to the locals that Max talked to on his way to the human continent, bioluminescence was much more prevalent amongst the sea species of the planet. Max slowly felt more and more at ease as he talked to the locals. Apparently the entire planet Earth had shifted to radiance in rather peaceful fashion. The current patriarch of the One Night family, Patricia One Night was particularly welcoming of humans and had opened the government coffers to build beautiful new cities and infrastructure for human living. Massive projects transforming the continent had been completed in a short six-month period with over a billion workers involved as critical infrastructure such as roads, defense, borders, rails and airports were established before constructing the housing, amenities and cities. Even now, except housing in some entertainment districts, massive development projects were ongoing as the human continent was expected to only be fully constructed after a full five years plan. When Max arrived at Rajput City he felt giddy and cheerful. The mansion where his family was living was named Rajput City in the honor of Max's family name. If his ancestors were still alive today they would surely shed tears of joy seeing this name as it showed the full glory of their bloodline. Just like his sister-in-law said, finding their home inside Rajput City was not at all hard as it was literally built at the center of the city about 25 feet above the rest of the city's base and sprawled across many acres of land. Not only was their house guarded and patrolled by thousands of guards but there were extremely destructive weapons capable of even incinerating Tier 4 invaders and critically injuring Tier 5 invaders mounted on the walls. 
Max felt a little intimidated as he walked up to the entrance gate where he was paused by two tier 4 guards who he recognized as true elite guild members. State your name and purpose, they asked Max and Sebastian coldly as it seemed to Max that they were professionals who turned down hundreds of sneaky visitors from entering the Rajput mansion every day. Max Rajput with my friend Sebastian. This is my home. Max declared as the guards paused for a second before scanning Max up and down. Max, the duo looked at each other in confusion, the entire earth knew about the golden boy, Rudra's younger brother and the shining star. However, it had been a long time since anyone had news of his whereabouts. Max looked much different to what he used to do as a human and the guards had a hard time recognizing him but Max silently said, one for all, all for one, go elites go, dispelling all their doubts about his identity in an instant. You were gone too long, the guard said in a melancholic voice as he cleared Max and Sebastian to enter the mansion. Max caught the sadness behind his voice however did not understand the reason behind it as he and Sebastian sat in the vintage Rolls Royce caddy that took them from the entrance gate towards the main living quarters passing through many lavish gardens and beautiful waterfalls. Envied it, you are beyond rich Max, you are uber 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 rich, Sebastian said as he gawked at the sculptures of naked women which served as the fountain centerpiece. Small tight bunda, he commented as he saw the original Michelangelo's David, not realizing that it was a historically significant piece of sculpture for the human race. Soon, Max and Sebastian were dropped off at the living quarters entrance as surprisingly, his sister-in-law Naomi stood waiting for him there alongside the two kids with large tears in her eyes. Max, Naomi exclaimed as she ran up to him for a hug as Max hugged his sister-in-law back tightly as he smiled to see her after such a long time. Sorry, I was gone for so long. Max said as he felt Naomi weep inconsolably on his shoulders as little Jake and Amy began crying as well seeing their mother in tears. Shoo, shoo, shoo here little ones, come hug big brother, Sebastian said as he got down to his knees and tried to hug Jake and Amy, but to his horror Amy ran up to him in what he assumed was to give a hug, but then kicked him in the balls before running away. Bad uncle, she said as she ran away after inflicting psychological and physical damage on Sebastian. Ouch, Sebastian tried to hold in his scream as he rolled on the ground in pain, when a familiar face entered his field of vision, Anna, shouted Sebastian as he stopped rolling and tried to get back on his feet as the much more mature looking elf girl rushed up to Sebastian to give him a hug. Tiny dwarf, she said as she lifted Sebastian to her now plentiful chest as she hugged him as if he were a doll. Max grinned a big smile when he noticed Anna, but since Naomi was still crying and he could not push her away Max waited patiently until she stopped crying to go greet Anna. Max's eyes focused on the living quarters entrance as his heartbeat increased in anticipation of seeing Asaiva. Max heard footsteps, he wondered if it was her. However, he was greeted with a much different picture as a beautiful elf stood there with a small baby in her arms, with the baby being a spitting image of his brother except having pointy ears and white wings. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Chapter 4 of 5, Enjoy. Forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 169 Sad News You are listening at NovelFull.audio Sister Ruby Max asked in a shaky voice, he had not seen Ruby since he played Omega many years ago. Anna had told Max about Ruby before the two entered the dungeon. The two of them had even planned to make Rudra meet with Ruby after the dungeon run, but due to his training Max never came back out and the matter about his elvish sister-in-law slipped out of his mind. Hey Max, Ruby said as she smiled in the same gentle way that Max remembered making his stomach do a happy roll. With Naomi letting Max go, Max walked up to his other sister-in-law as he intently looked into the blue eyes of the baby in her hands. Hey buddy, Max said in a calm voice as one could make out the oozing love behind those words when he said them, however, the small baby who was sucking his thumb only turned away from Max shyly as he put his head over his mother's shoulders. Wah! What's his name, Max asked happily as Ruby replied, his name is Kartike Rajput, Kartike, what a beautiful name, Max chuckled as Ruby carefully handed the baby to his uncle as Kartike instantly began squirming and struggling to be left back with his mother. 
Haha, <laughs> he's strong, Max commented as he realized that although he was holding a few months old baby it was unusually heavy and strong for a child. Max felt his arms tickle when Kartike tried to flap his small wings in order to break free from Max's embrace but when that failed he quietly surrendered as he stared into Max's blood-red eyes with a frustrated gaze. Huh, brother looks at me the same way, Max said as he found the expression on little Kartike's face to be exactly like his brother's as he gave the cute little wingball back to Ruby. It's good to see you, big sister Ruby, Max said as Ruby smiled a sad smile in response. Jake. Amy. Max said as he spread his arms inviting his other nephew and niece to hug him as the two kids did so happily. Uncle Max, they said as they flew into Max's embrace much to the surprise of Max. I did not think they would recognize me, Max said as he hugged them both tightly while throwing a confused expression on his face while looking at Naomi. Oh, I show them pictures and tell them bedtime stories about your adventures. Naomi said as Max finally understood why they recognized him. Max laughed a hearty laugh, the last time he saw these brats they had not learned how to speak yet, however, now that heard them speak words it felt oddly satisfying. Where is brother and Asiva? Max asked as he saw the smiles evaporate from everyone's faces. Anna looked towards Naomi and Ruby for help, but Ruby avoided eye contact with Anna while Naomi looked like she was about to burst into tears again. Trying to maintain the happy atmosphere of Max's return for a bit longer, Anna ditched Sebastian and ran up to Max as she hugged him tight. Max Anna exclaimed as Max gave his friend a big fat hug. Anna had changed a lot since Max had last seen her, she was at least four inches taller and her boobs went from B cups to D cups, it was like she had undergone the last growth spurt of puberty and was now more of a woman than a girl. You're tall and smell nice for some reason, Max commented awkwardly as Anna punched him in the stomach for the sly remark. I always smelled nice, okay. Anna said as Max and Sebastian broke into a laugh. No but seriously, where is Asiva? Sebastian asked as Anna turned to give him the death glare. She had worked so hard to divert the topic but stupid Sebastian would not get the cue. What? Why are you looking at me like that? I'm just a coward. Sebastian said as Anna sighed, she knew she had to reveal the details sooner or later hence she said, Asiva, she should be with Severus. Okay, where are Asiva and Severus? Asked Max, together, replied Anna as she felt Max and Sebastian's skeptical gaze peering through her skin, Anna, stop going round and round in circles, give it to me straight, where are Anna and Severus? Max asked authoritatively as Anna began to sweat. Eventually she sighed and gave up as she realized that there was no comfortable words for her to soften the blow for Max and Sebastian. In prison, detained by the Kingsman clan, chained in a cell naked, tortured every day, Anna replied as Max subconsciously created fire in his palms from the anger of listening to this statement. Then what the hell are you doing here? Are we preparing a response team to go save them? Max asked as he gazed straight into Anna's eyes with a murderous expression. If I could, I would have saved her already, but I can't. Patricia one night is trying out for a prisoner swap deal and the talks are in progress but it will take at least 3.4 months before any breakthrough is made. Bullshit. I'm not letting my Asiva suffer for 3.4 months at the hands of the Kingsman bastards, I'll burn that kingdom to ashes if they so dare touch her skin. Where is brother? I need to talk to him. Max snapped back at Anna as he waited for the answer as to where Rudra was. Where is brother? Max asked again, this time a little louder, he is not here Max. Anna replied in a muddled voice, okay, so where is he? Max asked again, his voice now inching towards madness, he is dead Max, the Universal Queen eliminated him. Ruby replied finally, as Max felt his heart crack into a million pieces. No you're lying. Max said as he felt the strength under his legs dissipate, making him fall to his knees. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. Chapter 5 of 5 for the day, hope you all enjoyed the mass release. Thank you for the consistent support you have shown for my work. 
let's maintain our 10th position for next week, forward slash forward slash forward slash. Chapter 170A Story You are listening at NovelFull.Audio No you're lying. Max could just not believe that his brother was dead, much less killed by the Universal Queen. The werewolf on Earth claimed that he was killed by Lucifer, but Ruby said it was the Universal Queen hence Max strongly believed there was something fishy with the story and that nobody really knew the truth. Max had seen Rudra's rise to prominence as a kid, he had seen his brother slay one opponent after another and make entire armies tremble when he marched against them alone. Nobody was as strong as his brother in his mind and nobody was capable of defeating him, Max was sure of it. Max did not understand exactly when it happened, but a streak of tears went down his chin, although his heart did not want to believe the news he had just heard, his mind reacted strongly to it. What exactly happened? Max asked in a broken voice as he wished to hear the exact details of his brother's death. Ruby looked at Naomi at this instance as the two wives of Rudra silently talked through their eyes as to who was going to narrate the story to Max, but after a short conversation it was decided that the best person who could narrate the story was not them but Patricia one night, the god who was present in the immortal arena when Rudra was killed. You come inside for now, we need to contact the matriarch Patricia to narrate you the tale as only she knows what exactly happened back then, Naomi said as Max did not respond to her words at all. The way Max had left for the dungeon was probably his high point in life, he had found lifelong friends, his family was budding and happy while he himself was growing as an individual. However, in the 2.5 years of his absence it seemed like everything had gone downhill. Severus and Asiva were captured while his brother was dead, it was like a storm had come for those dear to him and the worst part was that Max was not there to support them during this tough time. The happy atmosphere of Max's return turned sour very quickly as Max brooded in a corner of the room alone, waiting for Patricia to grace him with her presence and narrate the tale of Rudra's death. The longer that Max waited the more determined he became that even though he was not there when his family needed him the most, he would make sure to avenge their grief when the chance came. He would obliterate the Kingsman clan to save Asiva and he would kill whoever was behind his brother's demise even if it would be the last thing he ever did. Thankfully, Patricia took time out of her busy schedule when she found out that Max was back home as she graced the Rajput mansion with her presence despite her busy schedule. Sister Patricia, Naomi said emotionally as she gave her a hug. Patricia one night was a domineering figure, she was six foot five and much wider than most earthen men. She had the aura of a ruler around her and carried herself with dignity befitting her status. She checked out Max intently before opening her mouth as the first thing she said was, I'm sorry for your loss Max, your brother loved you a lot. Max felt his eyes tear up at this statement. He knew his brother loved him a lot, his brother being the only person who loved him unconditionally and would fight the whole universe for him if need be. It was a bond that was irreplaceable for Max. Who did it? Max asked in a hoarse voice as he emitted a mixture of anger, bloodlust and sadness with his question, to understand the circumstances of Shikani the undefeated's death we need to start from the very start. Come take a walk with me, this is going to be a very long story. Patricia said as Max quickly got to his feet and followed her as the two began privately walking in the garden outside. Patricia was silent for the first few minutes, contemplating on exactly what all she could talk about to Max and what all she could not as she tried to formulate the best version of the story that she could reveal to Max. It all started because of Thor being an incompetent ruler. The Thunder Nation was infiltrated from the bottom to top with Dark Faction supporters and it was absolutely imperative that we wiped them clean since Thor repeatedly ignored our warnings that his council was compromised. Had we taken no action, Lucifer would have gained a strong base inside the Light Faction territory from where he could have infected all the other nations. To be honest Lucifer was very close to achieving this mission as well, however, then your brother graduated from Omega as a god and tipped the scales of power in the universe. You see Max, us gods, we don't have the same balls as tier 2, tier 3 warriors even though we are stronger. When a god reaches godhood they no longer wish to engage in battles with other gods if it can be avoided and they especially don't fight with gods who are stronger than them. 
Maybe it's because mortality is no longer an issue for us that we no longer take unnecessary risks knowing that even without taking them slowly we would progress in our paths anyway. Hence even though we wanted to cause a ruckus inside the Thunder Nation we did not have any capable men under the One Night Banner or even outside our banner who could help us achieve this goal. The monarch, Augustus One Night repeatedly tried to hire the mercenary gods to take this mission, but everyone got cold feet to go against the Tier 8 Thorodinson. No Tier 6 or Tier 7 god in this universe has the guts to fight a monarch, not one. In the universe the monarch's power is absolute and no amount of money or benefits can move a god to take action against one of them. However in such a hopeless universe there was one man who did not give a fuck about Tier 8 power, who did not give a fuck about who he went up against or what the consequences of his actions would be. Shikuni the undefeated was a real man that I can tell you with pride, as I can vouch with my life that you can wait for a million more years and there will never be another god with the guts and capabilities that he had. In a mission that everyone else cowered he accepted readily as long as the safety of his family and earthlings was guaranteed. Sometimes I get shivers down my own spine thinking about the mad force of nature that your brother was, because if he did not have his family to keep him in check, I think he would become the single most destructive force in the history of the universe. Because in just three short months after he accepted the duty to root the Thunder Nation, he had brought the nation to its knees. Max's eyes widened in shock when he heard this background, it seemed like there was a lot more to his brother's death than he knew. Forward slash forward slash forward slash a slash n. It's Saturday, hence here is the last riddle for the Christmas series. This one is for strongest guild master fans Q, what two hidden treasures did Rudra have on his body? State their names and tier. The first correct answer in the comments wins a price forward slash forward slash forward slash.